So welcome everybody back to another Tuesday night uh, teaching. Uh, we're really, really excited to have somebody who's extra special to me tonight. Uh, but before I get there, I just want to make sure that we uh, just make make a couple few announcements. You can see um, on the TV screens up there that we're kind of uh, advertising uh, that the Tuesday night teaching series is continuing throughout the entire rest of the year. And we have a lot of exciting teachers that are going to be with us. Some, uh, uh, well, for the most part, I can believe that you know all of them, but some of them might be a little unfamiliar to you. So I just want to encourage you to come up to see what they have to say. Uh, but we're, we're super excited because uh, we have folks like Tammy Kaufman is going to be with us on the 1st of August. Uh, she has been well uh, involved with the House of the Sozo Ministry, and she has a lot to say uh, in the realm of the five-fold ministry. So she's going to be sharing what she's learned through her studies. She's currently pursuing her master's degree in, uh, I think, in theology is what she's getting. We'll have to confirm that when she gets back. But, uh, she's uh, pursuing that. She has just a, a wealth of knowledge regarding all kinds of things within the Christian world. And uh, she has some beautiful things to say about the five-fold ministry in the church. So that's going to be nice to see. Uh, even next week, uh, guys, come on out. Next week is going to be a special night for just the guys. It's going to be a men's focus night. So ladies, sorry, don't come. You will be rejected at the door. Uh, you already had yours. Yeah, you already had yours, so you can't, you can't complain too much. But there's so much more to come. We've got video series with Harold Eberle that's going to begin in the fall. That's going to be Kingdom Finances, so you definitely don't want to miss that. That's going to be a 10-week study that we're going to do here. Plus uh, several others, Dean and Lisa, who are in the back right now. They're going to be sharing some other things. So it's, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, so with that being said, I want to introduce... Uh, a person who I've known for a long time. I've known her for about 25 years. Uh, no, seriously, Amy uh, is my best friend. Uh, I can't imagine um, not having life without her, and I'm so privileged to be able to uh, have her come up and share some of the things that she has learned, uh, not just in in the kingdom in and of itself, but as an educator, she has a wealth of knowledge of just interacting with all types of people that have all types of different strengths and weaknesses. And the beautiful thing is, is that she is able to uh, get into what's the best method to help people learn and grow in advance of their abilities. So she's going to share a lot about that today. So Amy Karens, she has a... Uh, her, her master's in education from Walden University, and she's going to be talking on a growth mindset in the kingdom. So with that, Amy. Teachery, but um, if you have any questions and you don't, I mean, I'll have questions at the end. But if you don't want to raise your hand, you'd rather write it on a card. I've got some cards I'll pass around, and that way I can answer. And if you want a copy of my notes, um, I didn't make a copy for everybody, but I can email them to you um, on Google or just email them to you at your email address. And if there's any other topics you'd like me to talk about, I put here some of my expertise um, in my opinion. I put parenting on here. But, <laughs> uh, growth mindset and parenting or just parenting in general, but health, wellness, brain growth, science in the Bible, things like that. So if there's other topics or any kind of topic you think, well, she might be good to talk about that, uh, just put that on there. So just to give me an idea and Chris an idea of, of things you might want to hear about in the future. So I'll sort of pass these around if anybody has, like I said, questions. Anything comes up in the middle, um, and if you want. And if not, and if you just want, don't want the notes, but want something else, you don't have to put your email address on there. Um, so this topic is just really near and dear to my heart. I shared a little bit at the leadership meeting we had in January, so some of this might be a little bit of a repeat, but honestly, it's probably not, because I spent at least eight hours yesterday <laughs> del delving into some other books and things, and then I was like, this is a lot of information for one hour, so I might have to come back and finish up another time. So. Um, Anyway, you have a, a quiz, so before I say too much about mindsets, let's find out what your mindset is. So there is a 20 questions, 
And if you could just, first thing that comes to your head when you read it, whether you strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree with uh, the statement. And then the second page is how to score it and the answer key sort of at the top. And I'm not going to ask you to share out what kind of mindset you have. This is more for a personal reflection. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started, but feel free to keep working on the quiz. I'm just going to go over some of the reference uh, books that I've used. Uh, the first one, and they're in order of appearance, not last name. But the um, first one is Mindset, New Psychology of Success. Uh, this was uh, part of my leadership program. I was in a leadership program, or I'm still am, getting ready to finish uh, to be a principal, basically, um, for schools. And so this was one of our required readings, and when I first read it, it was very painful to read, so, um, but I'm glad I'm on the other side, and it was some joy on the other side. So um, kind of opened some real windows into a lot of different things, mainly just some spirit. The Lord really spoke to me through this book. So it was a book that I had to read for school, but it was uh, very eye-opening in the spiritual realm, even though it's not a, a Christian-based you know, book. Um, the other one is, and we have this out in the, the bookstore, The Switch on Your Brain, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, The Key to Peak Happiness, Thinking, and Health. So I use some concepts from that book. Um, and that's a lot about science in your brain. And, and there's a brain detox program that talks about a 21-day, um, how to rewire your brain, sort of uh, refresh and renew your brain. Another book is Bob Hazlitt's Think Like Heaven, Change Your Thinking, Change Your World. So this is sort of taking all of the information and kind of putting it into a kingdom mindset. So that's kind of how I got the title of the book. Um, so, I mean, title of my lesson um, was how to like take all of this and put it into a kingdom perspective, a Christian perspective. And then these two are probably my oldest resources that I've been using over the last couple of years since I went through the Ed Sozo, um, Educational Sozo, Praying for the Brain, Re Rewiring the Brain Through Prayer by Jeff Jeffrey, Dr. Jeffrey Barsh, and also his Educational Sozo book. So all of those books I've kind of referenced in some way um, in this teaching. So. All right. So starting out, uh, just our outline, we did the mindset quiz. We're going to talk about what is a growth versus a fixed mindset. Um, I'm going to give you a little background into my story, my personal testimony and story into this and why this is interesting to me. Um, and then why are mindsets important? So why is it even important to know what kind of mindset you have and um, why are they important you know, in our lives? Um, some of what does science, what science says, and that's um, actually in all the different books they talk about that. We're going to look at what scripture says as well, and how can having a growth mindset impact the kingdom. And then what about difficult areas where we can talk a little bit about maybe where Ed Sozo would help. So, And then there's a prayer. We have a prayer at the end. And if anybody would like specific prayer at the end, I can have some time for that as well. So, um, Basically, when we think of growing your mindset, one of the concepts of the book is, um, so there's four of the statements here. One, your intelligence is something very basic about you that you can't change very much. Two, you can learn new things, but you really can't change how intelligent you are. Three, no matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change quite a bit. Four, you can always substantially change how intelligent you are. So on this particular one, like one and two would be a fixed mindset, and three and four would be a growth mindset. Um, people have different beliefs about intelligence. So sometimes people's beliefs can be different, like in areas of sports versus personality, or um, education versus your spiritual walk, or artistic talent versus um, a personal quality or something. So you can actually have different viewpoints in different areas. So that's kind of interesting. I'm used to this. All right, so um, so thinking about personal qualities, and this is out of the Growth Mindset book. 
Um, either you might think you're a certain kind of person, there's not much that can be done to really change that. No matter what kind of person you are, you can always change substantially. You can do things differently, but the important parts of who you are can't be changed. Or you can always change basic things about the kind of person you are. And so for this one, one and three would be fixed, and two and four would be growth mindset. So what is the difference between the two? So when we think about a fixed mindset, that comes from the belief that your qualities are basically like carved in stone and who you are is who you are. And, you know, a lot of spiritual, you know, a lot of religious kind of um, institutions may really hold to this fixed mindset. Um, who you are is who you are, period. God's created you to be a certain way. Uh, your characteristics, your intelligence a certain way. Your personality is a certain way. Your creativity is a certain way. You're just fixed. And it really can't be developed. And then the growth mindset comes from the belief that your basic qualities are things you can cultivate through effort. Yet uh, people, can differ, people can differ greatly in their aptitude, talents, interests, temperaments, but everybody can grow through application and experience. So there's a lot of uh, spiritual, you know, a lot of um, religious institutions, we would say, or churches that would have that mindset. So um, you can see that, I, I mean, I see both. And actually, when I, the last time I took the test, I was growth with fixed qualities because I'm, I feel like I want to be the growth mindset. But there are still, like, there were still some things in me that I was not ready to give up yet. Like, I wasn't ready to say, well, I kind of believe that I can do anything, or I can do, um, well, let's see, I mean, with some of the questions, like this one question in particular, um, I often get angry when I get feedback about my performance. That was hard, it's hard for me. You know, I, not angry, but uncomfortably upset if somebody said I wasn't doing a good job. So I'd have to fix that and do a good job for them. You know, so that sort of like was ingrained in me to like do a good job and please people and be right and sit right and dress right and, you know, that whole concept. So for me, it's, it's taking a while to change that in me. It's like I want to believe that it doesn't bother me, but if I'm being honest and taking a quiz, it bothers me. And uh, so I'll share a little bit more about that. But this is a really big plug in schools now. I mean, most people here, you know, my age or older. So when we, when I was growing up, it was all about the fixed mindset. I mean, you either were in the smart class or not smart class. You were. Uh, I mean, there, and you definitely knew the difference if somebody really had a physical handicap. I mean. It, in my, in my day and age, so I can only imagine. However, education today has just changed so much. I mean, we are very much in the growth mindset in most educational schools and places now. I mean, it's even taught, like, as part of the curriculum to be, you know, better than you were the day before and all. So I, I really feel like children that are growing up today have a real advantage in that because it's all about how much effort you put into something, not a fixed trait like, well, you either got it or you don't, you know, I can't help you very much, you know. So, um, so anyway, the growth mindset, just a few of the things. Um, a big one on there is feedback is constructive. And that's one, like I said, I, I struggle with because I want to have that. I want to have feedback be constructive, but I definitely can struggle with it. And, and now that I've gone through this evaluator program, I'm like, at one, I think maybe I got into it because I thought, well, if I'm the one doing the evaluating, <laughs> then I don't have to worry about others evaluating me. But through the process, I've actually learned how valuable feedback can be and how much it can help you to grow. So that's really, really been a growth area for me over the past 15 months. Um, and just like I like to try new things. I mean, I wouldn't say that I always like to try new things. I like to do the same thing. Um, so looking at the fixed mindset, um, 
feedback and criticism are personal. Like, so, like, learning to separate from the feedback that is not like an attack on your personality or your care or who you are, you know, but that person's telling you in love to help you to grow. And so, kind of like separating yourself and taking a step back sometimes, that has helped me in that area. Um, the whole concept that I'm either good or I'm not, you know. And I'm going to get into my testimony a little bit, but um, uh, the biggest key for uh, when Dr. Dweck had started her um, concepts and learning about this, she had had children in a room and gave them hard puzzles. So basically, some of the kids were like, yeah, I want the harder ones. Give me the harder ones. I can learn how to do it. And even though they weren't getting them right, like they were thriving off of the challenge of the hard puzzle. And then some of the kids were just like, can I just take the easy one? <laughs> like they didn't want to fail. And so it was just this concept of, well, huh. So some kids, I mean, they were just all the same age, you know, but some people see failure as an opportunity to grow or give me more challenges. It makes my brain smarter. Um, this is really hard. I like hard stuff. I like hard thinking. But then some people just were like, okay, if I fail, then it shows I'm not smart. So I just want to do the easy puzzle so I don't grow any. I'll just stay here in my weak, you know, in my, my own personal strength so I'm not growing at all. So that was kind of, I thought that was really interesting because, you know, um, being a teacher, I've seen that, you know, throughout. And you definitely, you know, you have kids coming in that know like all of your curriculum already, and you're sort of like, well, they got the A, and you know, they learned to read by walking by the bookstore. And then some kids, it's like, you know, oh my gosh, will this kid ever learn to read? You know, you feel like you put your blood, sweat, tears, and everything. And you know, I've gone into parent-teacher meetings and we've cried, and you know, over these, you know, their children who are struggling with reading and. My heart just goes out because I'm like, he really wants to read so bad and we're working so hard, you know, and it just, at that point, it's like, you know, it really makes you think as a teacher, you know, and with a kid that already knew how to read, I wasn't teaching a whole lot. I'm really working on this other child. You know, that's the one that really shows who, if I'm a good teacher or not, not the one that already knows how to read when they come in. The parent already did the job, you know, so... Anyway, so some of those things, like I don't like to be challenged, or I either can do it or I can't. Um, pre predestination or predetermination, that's a big thing um, in these. And, uh, and even in relationships, one of the biggest things in the book that I kind of was like, huh, that's really interesting. Because it's a, in a fixed mindset, people feel judged and labeled by rejection. So say you're in a divorce or a breakup. So basically, the, the concept is, I want revenge. Like, that's their main point, is like getting back. Whereas somebody with a growth mindset says, hmm, maybe I need to learn forgiveness and communication a little better. And they're, they don't feel permanently branded by the breakup. Mm -hmm. And so they want, you know, forgiveness is their biggest thing. So that's the difference in, in those relationships. And it talked a lot about how um, Dr. Dweck wanted, you know, when she was young, that it's fairy tale marriage, happily ever after, somebody to complete her, you know, make her see if she did everything right. And, you know, the reality is there are no problem free candidates. You know, we all have limitations and um, should be they worked happily ever after, not they lived happily ever after. Uh, so the whole point of marriage is to encourage your partner's development and have they them encourage yours. Um, so, just as a summary of what the fixed versus growth mindset is, in the fixed, uh, your ability is static, it doesn't really change, so it's either you're smart or not, you know, and um, in the growth mindset, your ability can be developed. Uh, the fixed mindset avoids challenges, uh, like that child that would avoid the puzzle, because they couldn't do it. Um, but in a growth mindset, they persist in obstacles. Um, sees effort as fruitless versus effort as necessary. 
uh, ignores useful criticism or learns from criticism, is threatened by others or is inspired by others' success. So can you be cultivated in an area where other people are growing and being promoted, you know? And I have to give uh, props to this, this church because I really feel like a majority of my thinking and changing has been in the past five years. And that has been because of the Sozo ministry, um, Pastor Bob, and just the family sort of atmosphere uh, of uh, this place. So a little bit about my background. I was the classic fixed thinker, I think. Um, if I could have labeled myself, I probably would have scored close to the high end of the fixed thinking. Um, and, and just for a variety of reasons. Um, I really thought some people were smart, some weren't as smart, and I was probably somewhere in the middle. Like, that's just kind of my belief system about myself. I'm kind of in the middle there. I'm just ho-hum, you know. Um, if I do well, I get praised, and then if I mess up, that's it. And then my relationship with God was a lot of just like black, white, right, wrong, heaven, hell. I just remember a lot about that scripture about spewing you out of his mouth that he was lukewarm. And I just remember, gosh, I'm always just lukewarm. I don't know, you know, I'm just sort of in the middle. You know, I'm not either. I guess I'm just, you know, I, I don't know that I ever, I, I just kind of just, I wanted to please God, but it was like I was either 100% pleasing Him or I wasn't. So it was like a difficult relationship. I always tried to please God, but then I have always heard scripture that sort of was like, well, if you're not like 100% there, you don't, you're missing the mark, you know, if you're not, you know, just driving toward it, you know, and then... Um, so another thought, you know, I'm not good at certain things, so I'm just going to focus on what works for me and what people like. So I wanted a lot of approval from others. I would do things I was good at because, you know, then I get the approval, you know, and I don't really want to work on those things that aren't good in me or not, I'm not the best at. Um, oh, okay, this one. It's not in my genes to be thin, you know. I just... I have a fat, oh, I better not say that because they might watch it. I was like, fat family, you know. No. <laughs> I, don't know. I won't say that. Yeah. Uh, heaviness runs, you know, we have German legs and a lot of, um, you know, it just isn't meant to be. Just not meant to be, you know. That was my mindset. Um, I knew I was not an artist. I don't know where Carrie gets it from, but no, nope, no, nope, wasn't an artist, not good at math, and uh, sports and me really don't get along. Um, I might be able to do like a single person sport, but like the whole team effort sports, no. Um, I don't think, I didn't think I could ever be a principal, even though people would say, you should be a principal. And I'd say, I'm not strict enough, I'm not mean enough to be a principal, so can't do that job. <laughs> And I don't know if God really likes me, because I don't have the same gifting as so-and-so over here, or I don't have the same drive or passion as that person. I'm not an evangelist, so, you know, I, I don't think this is going to work out, you know. So, there, so I just really was very fixed in these just mindsets that I couldn't change, and I kind of avoided people judging me, because then they were judging me, you know, and, uh, you know, I didn't really know um, how to change some of these things. And, you know, interestingly enough, it was probably when I moved here to Delaware, I remember I got a job at the Christian school, and um, I was working, and I, oh, big thing is just being in God's will was like, Something that I just ran to, like I had to be in God's will. This was like, I, I mean, if it was over there, I was running over there. And I just, even if I had a desire to do something different, you know, I thought, well, I don't know. That's my desire. I've got to just be in God's will. So I thought, surely working at the Christian school was God's will. 
So, I know. Even though I kept having this, you know, heart for the lost and the kids that weren't in the Christian, I mean, you know what I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The, the public school kids. I mean, well, but I don't know if that's God's will for me, you know, yeah. so I can't verge from that. And I remember sitting in a sozo, wow. and Hannah was in the sozo. She was probably 16 at the time, or 17, I don't know. <laughs> And she was second chair, so I don't even know if she was supposed to say something, but we're kind of going through this whole thing. She's like, can I say something? <laughs> Here I am, a 40-something, you know, you're all, sure, tell me. She said the most profound thing in my, I've ever heard in my life, and I was like, wow, this 16-year-old gets it. This church is just so rich, because if you kids can get it at 16, I spent a whole lifetime you know, striving to get, or, you know, striving and working to get here. She's like, anything you put your hands to do is God's will for you because you have God in you, and he's walking, so if you decide to go over here, that's God's will. If you decide to go over, you know, so that was like, whew, the pressure was off. Like, I really just received that. and was like, oh, you mean, she's like, because maybe God put the idea in your head to begin with, like, that you wanted to work with the public school kids, or whatever, in a different environment. So um, so that was really a relief right there for me. Yeah. Also, I went to this seminar, and it was called What is Intelligence? And I don't think they ever answered the question <laughs> the whole seminar. But it was one of those, it was the best professional development I'd ever gone to in my career. I was just so wowed by the, perf by the, perf what it yeah, the presenter. And she said just some, some profound things and it just changed my viewpoint. Like, just somebody can say something, it drops in your soul, and you're just like, wow, I'm never the same again. Mm -hmm. And it was basically, well, what is intelligence? And all along, I had had this concept with people were either born with it or not, or you can only have so much because of IQ. But the question was, and she never answered the question. She wasn't, like, telling me what intelligence was. She was just like, well, what is intelligence? You know, and that really, I had read Gardner's work on multiple intelligences, and I had read a lot of things for my career, and I believed in those things, but it was, it was sort of just like, I'm putting the emphasis on book smart. Me. And a lot of people do that. But that doesn't really define someone's intelligence. Somebody could be intelligent in creating. Um, and, you know... I remember just dropping in my spirit, you know, why do you think God would limit somebody's intelligence, you know? He created us all to have, like, this different version of intelligence. So I'm not really answering that question for you, but just saying in my experience, that was really something that um, was like a light bulb. Well, who says what is intelligence? Like, wow. <laughs> you know, like, what if God thought creating an artistic ability is the highest intelligence. Like, who rates what intelligence is? And we're the ones, you know, that do all that. You know, so that really just opened. So I was like, huh, okay. Well, now that changes everything. And then I remember um, studying a little bit more. I did another training on growth mindset. And um, thought, well, I kind of like this. I think I could, could really kind of delve into this. Like, I, I could believe some of this stuff, and I, I think it's interesting. And, um, and then I remember seeing the Ed Soso, and I was like, huh. And then that kind of opened up. It just fit right along with my line of work, so it was like my work and my spiritual life. They're kind of working together now. Wow, isn't that something? Like, it's your whole being, you know? And then God was like, huh, what about your weight issue? <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was, I mean, I've always been self-reflective of that anyway. But that was sort of like, well, that's off on the side here. We're not going to kind of tackle that yet, because that certainly can't be part of all this, you know. And um, at one point, I just, for health reasons, was two years ago, actually, I said, oh, well, I've never tried exercising. <laughs> I'm gonna not only I, I wanted to join the gym but I was like I know in order to go I need to get a trainer so for my birthday I got a trainer and I liked it so much because it kept me accountable 
and then I kept doing it for like the whole year. I don't even know where we found the money for it, but because it was pricey. But it was like, well, I'd rather pay this than the copay for the doctor, so I'm going to do it. And and somehow, you know, 60 pounds came off, you know, in that process. And I'm still working on it, and you know, and it's an everyday thing. But um, especially in the book that talks about switching on your brain and the scientific <coughs> aspects of things, a predisposition to something like it's not in my genes to be thin, just because you're predisposition for something doesn't mean it's your destiny. That's right. Yeah. So we're going to look at this and let's see what time it is. Okay. Alright, so just because people can do something with little or no training, it doesn't mean that others can't do it and sometimes better with training. So that's a concept that, huh, you know, you don't really think, and I know this might be a little hard to read, but these are just some famous failures. and. The biggest one they always talk about when you hear growth mindset is Michael Jordan. He was cut from his high school basketball team. He, uh, like, they didn't even want him on the high school team. He uh, wasn't uh, college, he didn't get into his first two picks. And the top two in the NBA, is that what it is, the basketball? Yeah, NBA. <laughs> See, I told you I wasn't a sports person. <laughs> the NBA, the top two teams, like, didn't even pick him as a recruit. Yeah, he's one of the top, like, basketball. And his mother said, you know, you need to discipline yourself. And so he got up every morning three for three hours and practiced basketball That's before true. school every day. So maybe he wasn't good, but that training is what made him the best. Einstein wasn't even able to speak till he was four years old. His teacher says he wouldn't amount too much. Oh. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination <laughs> and having no original ideas. Um, Steve Jobs, at 30 years old, he was left devastated and depressed after being um, unceremoniously removed from the company that he started. So. Oprah Winfrey was demoted from her job as a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television. And the Beatles were rejected by a recording studio saying, we don't like their sound, they have no future in show business. <laughs> so the concept of the growth mindset is if you've never failed, you haven't tried anything new. So do you try something new just to try it and say, hey, maybe I, I can learn this, maybe I can. Uh, or do you just say, well, I'm not good at that, so I'm not even going to try it. And so science agrees. Like, here's the thing. We kind of, what we do is we say, I'm not good at blank, and then our brain forms a pattern for that thinking. And then it basically stops growth of new dendrites and new um, growth. Mm. So when you say, I can't do something, you are a, you're just stopping any growth in that area in your brain. Um, but... Science agrees that our brains can change and grow. In the 70s, the pretty much we thought that the brain was static and it could not grow. Uh, this is based off of the um, Carolyn Leaf Switch on Your Brain book. And yet, now, science agrees that our brains are malleable, which is called neuroplasty. That is actually that our brains can grow and change. So that's basically what they mean. But that new nerve, yeah, new nerve cells are born daily. So the scripture that says, his mercies are new every morning. So every morning you have a new chance of growing new cells in your brain. You're not a victim of your biology. Like I said, your predisposition is not your destiny. And we can change the physical nature of our brain by thinking and choosing. So there's been multiple, countless studies of uh, people that they said were going to be a vegetable, but like their determination, they're getting up every morning, they're putting in the work and doing the exercises and their brain actually connecting and miracles happen, you know, healing and miracles. And uh, so all of this is, is very interesting that science actually aligns up with scripture in a lot of these areas. Um, and the Think Like Heaven book kind of goes on to then bring, how do we bring heaven into this equation? So, um, some of the scriptures that talk about mind renewal, do not conform to the pattern of this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, 
His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's Romans 12, 2. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So how can we connect our mind? The Lord's mercies are new every morning. Lamentations 3, 22, 23. And then faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So our hope, so this hope has something to do with it. This um, drive that, you know, you can change and do things better. And, you know, the thing with math for me, like just one area, I really wasn't good at math. I remember... Um, I was in the gifted and talented class for reading, but then for math, they didn't want me in the gifted and talented. You know, I remember it was like a big deal because I was the only kid that only went to gifted and talented for one subject or not both. And I know you're like, oh, you got to go to gifted and talented for reading. But for me, it was like, well, gee, I must really have a deficit in this math area. And then I remember specifically my fourth grade teacher saying something, and I've worked this out in the so I'm, I'm kind of beyond it. Um, but I remember that and just always saying, well, I, I'm just not going to do that, you know. And these things that we say really then stick in our brains, you know. And one year I had to teach math, and I was a little like, it was fourth grade math, and it was <laughs> private school math, so it was like very, you know, very orderly based. But I realized that when I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and I kept doing it over the long division and long division, I got pretty good at teaching fourth grade math. You know, so good that, you know, I would go out and show other people how to teach these different concepts. And I'd come up with fun pneumatic, mnemonics and ways to do things and add music to it and, you know, and make it fun, make it a game. So it maybe was the pre predisposition that I wasn't a brain scholar at math, but I could learn math. Um, and uh, and the whole thing about just your predisposition, perhaps, to a certain body size, or maybe just the way. I mean, I know that I am carb sensitive. Like it, I know that that is just the truth. <laughs> Yet I love to eat donuts. But I mean, you know, I I, I know that that's not fair. I think. <laughs> Other people can eat all these things and they don't gain any weight. My other daughter, I have one daughter, that she can eat any gold thing she wants, you know, bake 20 bagels in a day and not gain a pound. You know, I just was like one half of a bagel and I'm put on a pound or something. Um, but that doesn't mean that I have, you know, it's just like always going to be this. I mean, and I, you know, I'm not trying to make light of anybody's situation because. You know, I know that di using different medicines can affect you, using, um, mm -hmm. you know, different bo things going on in your body can really... Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, when you can kind of like get down to the roots, cause of some of these things, um, a lot can be said of renewing your mind and kind of like having that clarity and asking God to help you. Like, that was the difference. This time, I was like, all right, God, I'm either getting this weight loss surgery, but then I knew a lot of people that had gotten it have already gained the weight back, if I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. I was scared of that, because I'm like, well, I do like to eat, so I don't think I want to cut half my stomach out. And, I mean, that's kind of a big decision to make, you know. I don't know. Again, I'm not making light of any of that. These are real things that people go through. And... Um, but for me, I was like, it's serious, you know, it was, it was very weighty on my mind, and I even scheduled the appointment to go to this doctor, and Chris was like, please do not do this, you know, he's like, yeah, I just want you to be healthy, you know, he's like, don't do that, because I want you to be healthy, you can do it, that's what he said, you can do it on your own, and I said, well, I don't know about on my own, but maybe I can get this trainer, and the trainer can help me, and I remember the first time I exercised, I was like, you, well, you want me to do what? You know, like, she kept having me do all these squats all around the gym, and I'm like, I'm going to hurt my knees. I can't, do, you know, my knees are hurt. I can't do this. I'm in pain. <laughs> but I did it. And you know what? I love exercise now. I never used to even like going in the gym, but now I'm like, 
If I don't exercise in the day, I feel like I'm missing something. I used to say I'm not a morning person. Mm -hmm. So my brain was sort of wired that it was like, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a morning person, I'm not a morning person. I mean, how many times do you have to say that before you believe it? So it finally occurred to me this year that if I was going to go to the gym, I had to do it in the morning because I was getting home really late. So I thought, okay, I'll go to the gym. 4.45. I have to get up at 4.45 to get to the gym by 5.30 to do my exercise, get a shower, get to work, blah, blah, blah. I started doing it and I absolutely love it. Now, I'm not saying I love it when the alarm goes off, but as long as I just get out of the bed, don't think about it, and start driving to the gym, I love, I feel like 20 years younger during the day. I mean, literally, I'm walking around the school like doing jumping jacks and stuff. I'm like, what? And if I don't go to the gym, then I feel all oh, sluggish and, you know, that I don't feel as good. And it's like, it's amazing to me because I think this whole part wasn't even part of my lifestyle two years ago. Yeah. You know, and how I've changed in that. And I'm like, the thing that I love to do the most at the gym are the ropes. And the um, and I love lifting weights, and I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, you know, um, what? You know? and, but now I look at people as like that Ernestine Shepherd, that like eight year old yes. bodybuilder. Yes. I'm like, I don't want to be that. Not that, you know, but I want yes, those muscles. Yeah. I never wanted muscles before, but now I'm like, I want to have muscles. That's awesome, you know. Like, that's cool. But anyway, it's cool. so I think what, what we think matters, you know, what we think about ourselves, what we think about others, our emotional intelligence, you know, that to me has grown like leaps and bounds. I, Chris could uh, attest to that. I mean, so, you know, we used to have these conversations all the time and he'd get so mad and he'd just be like, I just want to fix the problem and you just want to talk about the problem. And, I just want to fix the problem, and you want to talk about it. Now it's like, we don't have those conversations anymore it's on some aspects of people or criticism. or it's just, I don't, We don't talk about that in people anymore, or people bothering me anymore. People don't bother me as much anymore that I have a bigger or higher emotional intelligence, I think. I, I, I don't get irritated as much. Now I'm not saying I don't get irritated ever, but... I'm not so sensitive anymore, you know? I'm not thinking about, most of the time I think if somebody's mean to me, they have their own issues they're dealing with and that's yes. their problem. That's right. It doesn't reflect on me. It's how they're dealing with the world and their life. So I'm not gonna take that on me because that's about them. <laughs> so, um, at Proverbs 4, 20 to 23, that's one of my most favorite ones. Um, dear friends, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. This is the message version. Concentrate. Learn it by heart. Those who discover these words live, really live, body and soul. They're bursting with health. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. That is where life starts. And then switch on the brain. Carolyn Leaf talks about how our cells, every cell that we have is connected to our heart. And the brain controls the heart, and the mind controls the brain. So whatever we're thinking about ends up affecting every cell in our body. You know? So, you know, if we're worrying, if we're stressed, that has an impact on our body. Mm -hmm. If we're feeling happy about life and our cell, you know, that has an impact on our body. Um, and the Bible clearly tells us to think on what? The things that are good. Mm -hmm. To think on these things. So whatever's true, whatever's good, whatever's right, whatever's pure, lovely. Dwell on the fine. I like this version. I think it's the Living Bible. Um, it says, whatever is the fine good things in others. Dwell on the fine good things in others. Isn't that? Because if you can just take the, take the view off yourself and look for others. Like, I'm so happy if somebody gets promoted now. I used to be all like, what's she doing with that chair? You know, like, why is she getting promoted and I'm not getting promoted? Now I'm like, well, maybe she's getting moved out and I don't get her, you know, spot. I even said the other day, I was like, this job's and better jobs is exhausting. I'm like, <laughs> it's like, but it's such a process of like filling out the applications and the, you know, paperwork and, you know, just 
But wow, I mean, God just continues to just bless and show up, you know, and, and offer better things. Because he wants us to have the good things. Um, think about all you can praise God for and be glad about it. All right, so bringing growth mindset into the kingdom mindset. What time is it? Okay, see it. We're doing good. <laughs> all right, so I thought of, like, how do we think of God? How do we think of ourselves? How do we think of life? And how do we think of heaven? Like those four areas to me are how to bring it into the kingdom or into our walk with the Lord, basically, our Christian life. Because everything connects. So here's my concept. Like when I realized that God is a personal, relational father and that he wants me to be my best for me. You know, he gets delight when I'm happy and I'm doing what I want to do, or like because it's what he wants to do, it's like the same thing. And I thought about my own kids. Like, at first I was a little uneasy with the whole grown-up kid thing because it's like, I need a book on like how to parent an adult. Because they keep coming to me with all these questions and I don't want to tell them what to do with their life, but you know, I want to give them good advice, godly advice. You know, but it was a different, you know, scenario when they're young. You just kind of, like, tell them what to do in a sense, you know. You give them guidelines, and and yet when you're an adult, you can't say, you know, you, you've got to, like, broaden your horizon. If you want your kids to grow, you have to give them some space, basically. But the best thing to me about the relationship with an adult child is when they call you as a friend. Like... At one, you know, sometimes, and it goes back and forth. So I think of this as God. You know, God, you know, he, he's going to get the phone calls from us that's basically like, I don't know what to do. You need to help me now. <laughs> but when we just, like, I love getting a phone call from my daughter, and she's just like, how's your day? What you doing? Oh, I thought about you. I saw a dress the other day. I thought you would really like it. Like, that's the best kind of phone call. She's not asking me for money. <laughs> she's not that she, she's a good girl. She don't ask for a whole lot. But, I mean, she's not really, she just wants a relationship with me. Yeah. You know, she just wants to see how I'm doing. And she cares about me as a friend. So it's not like she wants to get anything out of me. She's just calling as my friend. <coughs> but she's my daughter. So that's, it's just like, this is a great, like, I love this adult relationship. Because, you know, you can't really be your kid's friend too too much. I mean, I'm, you know, when they're 16, then you know, I have to give them a little more boundaries and so on. But I have good girls, so. Um, I, I, hopefully I'm their friend too, but, you know, I'm not like, oh, I want to be your best friend, you know. If, if you got to be their parent, you got to be their parent. But it is nice. So when I think of God like that, that's a way different mindset than my holiness upbringing. Of, and, and you know I'm not making light of that you know but it's just a different concept of God because in that God was a distant God he wasn't really fond of me very much because I either had to be hot or cold or right or wrong or I didn't really have the equation figured out because you know I wasn't good at math so, no. <laughs> um, so I, you know it was all like conditional so this God, you know, this growth mindset for a God that wants to see me grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, you know, that's a different kind of God, really, that I different relationship that I'm having with him. I mean, it's the same God, but it's like a different viewpoint, you know? And then what's my perception of myself? You know, if my perception of myself is like I'm only so, like I can only go so far and I only want to concentrate on things I'm good at, like I'm not going to get very far. But if my concept is I can do anything through Christ, I'm going to try some hard things because, hey, maybe I can lift 200 pounds, you know, maybe I can do this thing that I never thought I could do before. Um, and my thinking is constantly getting better and changing. What about life? You know, how do, how do I bring growth mindset into just life? Well, I'm here to leave an impact on others, to live abundantly, to live at rest. Everywhere I go should be a deposit of other people believing 
they can live in rest. They shouldn't look at me and say, oh my God, I'm going to be a Christian. Oh, she's a mess. I mean, I hope somebody looks at me and thinks, wow, she's, she's, she's working on some things, but she's going, moving forward. Yeah. You know, she's really growing in those areas. That's growth mindset. That you're not just stuck somewhere and not changing at all, but that you're moving forward. Yeah. And so, and, and I'm not saying this to say that you got to be good at everything. Because, you know, there might be some things you never even want to try or do, and that's you're not called to do that, or that's just not, you know, in your interest, that's fine. Um, there's certainly things, dreams that God's probably put into your heart that you're sort of like, okay, well, that I really want to do. Maybe you have, a, like, something you really want to do, but you're like, I have no idea how to even start. You know, and that's sort of where I think God's, like, trying to, like, edges went in, you know. And then how do we view heaven? Like, heaven is a retirement home, sort of, you know. Is it a retirement? Well, I can't wait to get to heaven, you know. And, and, and again, I'm not making light of that. I mean, heaven, we all want to go to heaven. We all want to, when we, when we die, we want to go there. We want to be with the Lord. Um, but do we see heaven as a place of communion now with God? Um, can we visit God in heaven, you know, in our prayer life? Does God desire to commune with us there? <clears throat> There's a lot in the book, Think Like Heaven, that talks about how we were created. Um, we were created in heaven, so we've been there. Um, so that basically, like, we can commune with God in heaven. And, you know, there's been, there are, scriptures in the Bible that talk about going up into the third heaven and the different layers of heaven and things like that. I'm not an expert on heaven, but um, I want to think that God <laughs> but I want to think that God would want to commune with us in that space that you know where he is. And uh, I always like when Harold comes and talks about like how we view it different than you know different viewpoints of heaven and things like that. So, um, so, so growth in that. So practical applications of this. So, I think it all starts in your mind, your mindset. Um, so you have to change your thinking before you can change your actions. Um, maybe that is, and, and there's not like a set, well, you're going to do this 10-step plan, you know, and I'm not really going to give you that, but, but I would suggest if you, want to make some changes in your life or you want to maybe grow your mindset a little bit um, that you pick up one of these books or just take some time to pray you know and think about and commune with God now I wouldn't recommend saying you know I'm going to pray for 12 minutes and then I'm going to pray for 13 minutes and then I'm going to pray for 15 minutes you know I mean just like God's relational he doesn't want us to put like a time frame on his, or his time with us so I mean but carve out some time to sort of like mental space time where you can just pray, think, meditate, commune, put on some worship music. Um, there's different tools. The Ed Sozo book has, a, um, they have prayers and things you can go through if that's somewhere, something you want to do. Just paper, pencil, writing things down. If you find that you have trouble like paying attention, um, Ed Sozo book has a lot of, um, tools on like ADHD and ADD prayers. Um, also, just writing things down sometimes keeps you focused. Um, think of some areas you'd like to change and be purposeful in working on them. Practice. So the biggest thing with growth mindset is practice. You, you get better at things through practice. And set goals for your areas and break them down into steps. So it's fine to say, I had a dream, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, well, for example, we had this dream room we were going to have in our house, it was a music room, and we talked about it for at least five years and didn't do anything about it. And then Chris had a teaching or something, Jonathan Galton, I think, had a teaching on like setting specific things about your goal. And then 
So we broke it down into manageable steps and said, okay, well first we have to get, if we're gonna, we have to clean out the garage, we have to get a shed first, so we have to budget money for that, we have to do this, 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 this. And then get people involved in your plan, because so Todd was like, well, I want to sew into that. And, you know, and, and so there were lots of people that wanted to pray into it and sew into it and get on board on the dream. But they might not have done that if we hadn't taken the time to break it down into manageable steps. Some of the best advice we ever got when we were young youth leaders was that we always should carry around with us our BHAGs, they called it. It was Ron Lewis. He said, big, hairy, audacious goals. You should always carry around a list of things that you need. So if anybody ever says, well, what do you need for your ministry? You can say, yeah. I need $20,000 or I need $300 for this or I need this. You know, you've got your goal. You've got, oh, I've got exactly right here what I need. Do you yeah. have any of these things? Awesome. Yeah. So um, write it down. Write it down into manageable steps and increments. And, you know, we were able to finish that dream room in like less than six months. Mm -hmm. And this was something that was just out of the realm for us at that time. We didn't have zero dollars saved up. Uh -huh. And somehow we got like $15,000 to complete this whole project within six months. And it was just Chris. You know, got raises, bonuses, yeah. different things came in. It was 70 degrees one day in December, so we could clean out the garage and everything. And I don't know how it's 70 in December, but thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and then just doing it, just getting up, not hitting snooze on the alarm, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> kind of just put, you know, putting it, just putting one foot in front of the other and doing it. So that would be some practical. Um, application and just in rest and thinking um, there's a big portion of the book that talks about um, the milkshake world we have where we try to like multitask and I'm very I do this a lot Chris would be like how can you do three things at once <laughs> well you know I'm doing all that. are you watching this TV show not really it's just on and I'm just typing I'm gonna, you know I'm doing all these things but they kind of, Dr. Lee was like, don't do that. <laughs> Basically, like, you need to be intentional about, purposeful about setting your mind to something. And the scripture that says, he restores my soul. Had a he leads me today, actually. And I was like, I'd really like to get my doctorate, but I don't want to get it in something I don't want to get it in. Like, I want to get it in this. Like something to do with brain growth or health. Like if I were to get my doctorate, not that I want to pay for it, but just calling in that money from heaven. Yeah. I mean, because I would do it. It's not a matter of the work. It's a matter of the cost, really. But I used to be like, well, you know, what if, what's going to be covered by my job? What would they pay for? What would other people, like, what could I get a job in? What could I do this and that? And it's like, I don't even care about all that stuff because, like, at this point, I'm certified as high as, you know, as I can get if I want to be a principal or something. So then anything else is just for the learning sake of knowledge. Like, that's what I want. I want to learn for the learning sake of knowledge to help other people, you know, and really push in on some of these mindsets and things that people, when we think we can't do things or, you know, some of these, like, really hard things where it's like, you know, the learning disabilities and the dementia and, and strokes and things, you know, like bringing the kingdom into that, like being able to have that anointing, you know, to pray for those and see those things. Yeah. Not just by like what I say, but you know, God's power actually like falling on them and them getting healed. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. Like, yeah. you know, I love, that's what I love. I've done about four or five Ed Sozos, and they're all kind of different in a way, but um, some of them have absolutely nothing to do with it, <laughs> what I would think, and I'm just like, okay. And I'm just like, would somebody with a learning disability please come into this thing? <laughs> I really want to try some of these tools that I've learned, but you know, that's yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but um, it's, it's been fun, because it's like, I like Sozo, but I always, think I'm going to just talk like I want to say what I want to say and <laughs> kind of like not talk and so so. But um, <laughs> just to see people healed and delivered yeah. uh, from issues that I don't really 
impacted like their thinking about who they are. You know, it's all about identity, yeah. really. It's all about yeah. becoming a child of God, recognizing that you're a daughter of God. And I'm speaking to the choir here, but just knowing who you are in Christ. So, anyway, so if we want to bow our heads, I'm just going to read this. Uh, or, I don't know if you guys can see it. You just want to read it with me? Sure. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of it. <laughs> I'll have to pray for the sight. <laughs> Do you fix that sight? Yeah. All right. We'll just say it out loud then. Lord, I thank you for who you created me to be. I partner with you in living a life that is renewed each morning. I ask that you activate the neurons and dendrites in my brain and that you repair and restore any weak or damaged areas and open new pathways for learning new things. I pray for faster processing and memorization with fewer errors. Increase my emotional intelligence to love and see people the way you love and see them. I pray that my outward actions will be a reflection of all of the healing that you have brought and will continue to bring in my life. Thank you that my predispositions are not my destiny, and I declare that my tomorrow will be stronger and healthier than my today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Sunday morning declaration. I just made that one up. I kind of like combined a bunch of things. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yep, yeah, the whole thing. I can just email you. Yep, yeah, this part of the path. There's a lot of prayers, you know, in this particular book, the prayers for the brain, and, and this. And the educational so is on the back of that one has um, a lot of prayers in the appendix. So if you want to look through it, if there was just a prayer or something you wanted to, I can make a copy of any of those if anybody wants specific. Or, you know, Dr. Barsh actually has a, a website, I think, with the prayers on there, Praying for the Brain. Mm -hmm. I think it's Praying for the Brain, or prayersforthebrain.com, I want to say, but I can... Um, which are pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm done. If anybody wants specific prayer, I'm free to. Amen. Pray for you.